David, you're actually one of the, I guess, um, international investors with a biggest position on Italian debt. Are you continuing down, down that road or, or do you have, kind of have to, you know, cut some of that exposure because you're worried about what happens next in the fight over the budget with Brussels? Yeah. I'm not sure I'd give us the moniker of the biggest, uh, but uh, you know we do have uh, an active um, investment position in uh, BTPs. With the more recent rally, we took some of that down. But broadly speaking, you know the playbook is turning out more or less as um, expected, which is. We are now seeing language coming out of the Italian, <coughs> excuse me, Italian government, mm -hmm. saying, you know, we're, we're, we're listening. We're going to uh, look for ways in which we can sort of stave off a, a confrontation. And they are listening to the gentlemen of the spread, um, as I think Deputy uh, Prime Minister Salvini uh, described us. So um, I do think there's still value in BTPs. I still think over time um, we'll get some uh, tightening in spreads. I think there's an overpricing of Italian exit risk. I mean, Italy's not leaving the euro full stop. Yep. Um, and I think the fiscal risks, um, at least over the sort of you know, foreseeable future, are yep. actually pretty, pretty modest. So, David, do you go short duration? Is that the biggest? I mean, where do you, where do you invest in the yield curve? Um, well, uh, I mean, we've been taking um, or had positions both on an outright uh, cash uh, basis and yield basis in futures, but also on a, on a spread basis as well. Where it's been done in terms of sp uh, spread, it's tended to be um, at the longer end of the uh, yield curve, where we've been um, doing it on an outright uh, cash basis, and we've tended to be, to be um, at the shorter end of the, the curve. So it does depend a lot on the strategy and the, and the risk profile of that strategy. All right, um, Simon, how do you see this ending up? I mean, again, we could have fresh elections. And yeah. see this could come before or after mm -hmm. the parliamentary elections of the EU. And it's unclear whether Brussels will actually give them a little bit of, of you know, a little bit more room to maneuver. I think Brussels should. I mean, you might yeah, not but expect... But will they? <laughs> yeah, well, therein lies. The problem is, actually, if you look at the, the history of Italy and the euro, they've run an average budget deficit of 3% of GDP. So, actually, what they're asking for is actually actually less than the 20-year average. And over that period, they've generated average real growth of 0.9% year on year. That's a fairly terrible performance. And therefore, you know, the smarter guy than I said, you try the same thing over and over again, you're not going to get this, you know, a you, you expect a different outcome. You're a fool, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm messing with his quote. But the, I think, what needs to change in Italy is um, a, a viewpoint on how they're going to spend this additional uh, you know, fiscal stimulus. Because at the moment, they're losing the argument on a rules-based system in, uh, in Brussels on the Growth and Stability Pact. They need to make the case that actually this is a, has a growth multiplier. This changes the dynamics. Because ultimately, that is where you actually see the uh, much more sustainable footing for the Italian economy. If they can convince uh, the rest of the eurozone economies that they can spend smart ultimately.